When a beam of light hits a piece of glass straight on, it passes right through it. But the waves that make up the light actually get slowed down by the glass and only go back to their normal speed when they come out the other side. That slowing down is what causes white light to split into a rainbow of colour whenever it hits glass on an angle. It happens because glass slows some colours of light more than others and because slowing down on an angle makes light bend. It's easy to understand the bending if you picture how the light waves would look from above, like how waves at the beach look if you see them from the air. And while white light's made up of all the different colours of light, it also helps to look at them one colour at a time. When a wave front of red light hits glass on an angle, the part of the wave that enters the glass first gets slowed down before the rest, and that changes the angle of the whole wave, like how waves bend around a cliff. Violet light gets slowed down even more by glass, so its waves bend more. All the other colours get bent somewhere in between. So the colours get separated when they first enter the glass on an angle and they spread out even more when they speed up on an angle as they leave. The reason the different colours slow down different amounts in glass is because they've got different wavelengths. Red light has the longest wavelength, followed by orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and finally violet with the shortest wavelength. And the shorter the wavelength, the longer it takes to travel through glass. That's because light interacts with electrons in the molecules that make up glass. Long wavelength light, like red, only interacts a bit with the electrons, so it doesn't get slowed much. But shorter wavelength violet light interacts more, so it gets slowed down more. Hello and welcome to the video on Atomic Spectrum. We will take a closer look at different types of spectra and the emission spectrum of hydrogen atom. Matter is made up of atoms, which can absorb and emit energy in the form of light. Each material absorbs and emits a unique set of wavelengths or colors of light, which is called its spectrum. There are two main types of spectra, line spectra and continuous spectra. Line spectrum is made up of discrete lines produced by gases, while continuous spectrum is a rainbow of colors blending smoothly into each other without any gaps, and contain a continuous range of colors or wavelengths. Solids, liquids and dense gases produces continuous spectra. The line spectra are further subdivided into two types, absorption spectrum and emission spectrum. When an electron jumps from a low energy level to a high one, it absorbs energy, and the set of wavelengths of light absorbed by an object is called its absorption spectrum. Similarly, when an electron jumps from an excited state to the ground state, it emits light in the form of photons. The set of wavelengths emitted is called the emission spectrum, and it is unique to each element. For example, the emission spectrum of hydrogen consists of five different sets of wavelengths, the Lyman, Balmer, Passion, Bracket, and Fun series. Each series corresponds to a different atomic transition. When an electron jumps from an excited state to the ground state, it emits invisible light which belong to the ultraviolet region of electromagnetic spectrum. The set of the emitted wavelengths is called the Lyman series. When an electron jumps from the third or higher energy level to the second energy level, visible light is produced in the form of red, blue, green, and all other visible colors of light. The set of these colors is called the Balmer series. When an electron jumps from the fourth or higher energy level to the third energy level, the Passion series is produced. 
The bracket series is produced when an electron jumps from fifth or a higher energy level to the fourth energy level. When an electron jumps from the sixth or higher energy level to the fifth energy level, the fun series is produced. All the passion bracket and fun series belong to the infrared region of electromagnetic spectrum. Hope you would have learned something new in this video. Thank you for watching. In astronomy class, we're going to talk about three different types of spectra that can be produced when light interacts with matter. There are continuous spectra, which look like a rainbow spectrum where all the colors blend together. There are emission spectra, which look like just bright lines on dark background. And then finally there is something called an absorption spectrum or absorption line spectrum. Sometimes it's called a dark line absorption spectrum, and this is where it looks like there's a continuous background, but certain colors have been removed, and so you'll see dark lines in the spectrum. Let's talk about how each of these are produced. In physics, the principles that govern how different types of spectra are produced are called Kirchhoff's laws, and one of these says that when the atoms inside a hot, dense object are excited or uh, energized, they give off light of all the different colors and make a continuous spectrum. And so it looks like a rainbow with all the colors blended together. So hot, dense sources give off continuous spectra. For example, the tungsten filaments inside an incandescent light bulb are hot and dense, and thus they give off continuous spectra. The interiors of stars are hot and dense, and they give off continuous spectra. To produce an emission spectrum, then what we have to, uh, to produce an emission spectrum, what has to occur is that the atoms inside a hot, low density uh, cloud of material or gas has to be energized. And in that case, only specific colors are going to be produced thus making an emission line spectrum, which, which uh, consists of certain colors, certain lines, and we have a black background. It looks like this. And so we have a hot, low-density cloud of gas. For example, that could be a nebula in space. Well, that's only going to produce the specific colors that the atoms in that cloud are sensitive to. What's happening at the atomic scale is that electrons in those atoms, in the cloud of gas, have been energized, and then they're dropping down levels and emitting photons of light. Individual atoms may be able to emit more than one color of light, but they're not going to produce an entire continuous spectrum. And so what we'll see is an emission line spectrum like we have here on the right. It looks like bright colored lines on a dark background. Finally, if we take the light that's produced uh, from a continuous source and then pass it through a lower density and cooler temperature cloud of material or cloud of gas, and we look at the light that emerges, the spectrum will be an absorption line spectrum. It looks like this. Let's say that we start with the continuous light coming from a hot dense source we pass it through a lower density and cooler collection of atoms, those atoms will absorb the colors that they are sensitive to. It's not going to be every color, just some of them. And so on the other side, if we take the emerging light and pass it through a, a prism or a spectrograph, what we'll see is what appears to be a continuous background with certain colors removed, an absorption line spectrum. At the atomic level, what's happening is that when all of that light, essentially white light, passes through the cloud of gas, the atoms in that cloud of gas absorb certain colors of light that uh, the, those atoms are sensitive to. They'll only absorb certain colors because they only have specific electron energy transitions that the electrons are able to uh, perform. 
They can't do every single color, and so you'll only get certain colors absorbed. All the others pass through that cloud of gas, and so in the end, what you get is that absorption line spectrum. It turns out that stars always have absorption line spectrums, and that's because even though the interior of a star is very hot and dense, as you go to the surface of the star, the interior is surrounded by lower density, cooler material. And so the continuous light that's produced inside of a star has to filter up through the outer layers of the star, and thus the emerging light from a star is an absorption line spectrum. Of